guys to Spooky Wednesday YouTube channel. Today's story is the doll house of shadows after her mother's sudden death. 17-year-old Isabella and her father moved to a remote town where they inherit an old mansion that has been in the family for generations. The mansion is cold, dark, and filled with strange whispers. As Isabella explores her new home, she stumbles upon an old, intricate dollhouse in the attic, a perfect replica of the mansion itself. But the dollhouse hides dark secrets, and soon Isabella realizes that it's not just a toy, it's a gateway to something evil. Isabella and her father, Ethan, move into the decrepit mansion to escape the haunting memories of her mother's death. The house is eerie and unwelcoming filled with old furniture, strange creaks, and shadows that seem to move on their own. Ethan tries to act upbeat, eager to restore the house, but Isabella feels uneasy from the moment they arrive. While exploring the dusty attic one afternoon, Isabella discovers an antique dollhouse. It's beautifully made, with tiny furniture, rooms, and dolls that resemble her, her father, and even her late mother. A strange chill runs through her as she inspects it, and she notices something odd. The doll version of her mother looks wrong. Its eyes are black, hollow voids, and its face is twisted into a sick smile. That night, Isabella dreams of the dollhouse. In her dream, she sees her mother, alive but different. Her eyes are empty, her skin pale as a corpse, and she whispers, Come find me. Isabella wakes up in a cold sweat, hearing footsteps echoing through the house. But when she checks, no one is there. Strange things start happening. The dollhouse begins to change on its own. One morning, Isabella finds the doll version of herself lying on the floor, its limbs twisted in unnatural ways. She feels a sharp pain in her own leg, as if something had struck her. But there's no one else around. Ethan doesn't believe her when she tells him about the dollhouse, brushing it off as stress from the move and her mother's passing. But the whispers grow louder. Isabella hears them at night, soft, raspy voices calling her name from the attic, urging her to come play. One evening, she witnesses something terrifying, as she watches the doll version of her father in the dollhouse, it suddenly falls down the stairs. Moments later, she hears a crash from downstairs. Her real father has tripped on the stairs, breaking his arm. Panic sets in as Isabella realizes the connection between the dollhouse and reality. Whatever happens to the dolls happens to her family. Determined to figure out what's going on, Isabella dives into the house's history. She visits the local library and learns from old records that the house once belonged to a distant relative, Margaret Crawford. Margaret had a daughter, Evelyn, who was known to be a strange child obsessed with dolls. One day, both Margaret and Evelyn vanished without a trace, leaving the house abandoned for decades. Isabella also discovers a chilling detail. A few months before their disappearance, the family had commissioned a doll house, a perfect replica of the mansion. The doll house was said to have been cursed by something dark, something ancient that had been awakened by the Crawford's strange rituals. The townspeople believed that the Crawfords had been consumed by the fairy dolls they created. Isabella is horrified but knows she must confront the evil tied to the doll house before it consumes her and her father. Isabella's father starts acting strange. He becomes distant, spending more and more time in the attic, staring at the doll version of her mother. He speaks to it as if her mother were alive, even insisting that she's coming back. One night, Isabella finds him sleepwalking, whispering to the doll, his voice hollow and lifeless. The doll house, now glowing with a faint, sickly light, seems alive. Every time Isabella gets near it, she feels a cold hand on her back, as if something is watching her. The dolls move on their own now, their eyes following her. The doll of her mother grows more twisted each day, its mouth slowly opening wider, as if screaming in silence. One night, the house is engulfed in darkness during a storm. Thunder rumbles.
falls, and the power goes out. Isabella, now terrified, hears laughter coming from the attic. Not a child's laughter, but something deeper, more sinister. She grabs a flashlight and heads upstairs, her heart pounding. In the attic, she finds her father standing over the dollhouse, eyes glazed, muttering in an unknown language. The dollhouse now shows a new room, one that doesn't exist in the real mansion, a shadowy chamber filled with dozens of dolls, all with blank, staring eyes. Among them, she sees a doll version of herself, trapped in a glass case. Suddenly, the dolls begin to move, their tiny faces contorting in agony. The mother doll's face twists into a monstrous shape, and a dark figure emerges from the shadows of the dollhouse, a ghostly version of Evelyn, now a twisted, evil spirit. Isabella realizes that the spirit of Evelyn has been trapped in the dollhouse for decades, using it as a way to manipulate and control whoever lives in the mansion. She has to destroy the dollhouse, but it's not that simple. The house itself begins to react, the walls shake, doors slam shut, and the air grows thick with the presence of something ancient and evil. With her father in a trance, Isabella grabs the dollhouse and runs, trying to escape the attic. But the dolls come to life, crawling out of the house and attacking her. Their small hands claw at her skin, and she hears Evelyn's voice whispering, You'll never leave. In a desperate move, Isabella throws the dollhouse to the floor and smashes it with an iron poker. The house shrieks as if it's alive, and the dolls burst into flames. The dark figure of Evelyn lets out a terrifying scream and vanishes, leaving behind only ashes. As the dollhouse burns, the mansion returns to normal. Her father collapses, waking up as if from a long nightmare, and the whispers finally stop. Weeks later, Isabella and her father leave the mansion, never to return. They don't speak of what happened that night, but Isabella knows the darkness is gone, or is it? As they drive away, she glances back at the mansion one last time and sees something that chills her to the bone. Standing in the attic window is a doll, its eyes black and hollow, staring at her with a twisted smile. The End Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. I hope you enjoyed this version of the story. If you ever need another story, or any specific stories, feel free to ask. Enjoy the spooky vibes. Smiling face with smiling eyes.